Hello, welcome to Forage Box TV. My name's Jim. Today we're going to be out on the kayak, paddle, looking for wild garlic. I'm out in the, a lovely gentle river just to find a little pool for resting at the moment. And we're going to do a little cook up at, at lunchtime. We'll do a bit of a stir fry. Might find a few other bits and bobs on the way. Yeah, we'll look at some of the ID features of wild garlic, what to look out for, what to look out for in terms of the poisonous lookalikes. That's very important, obviously. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to identify, but it's not too difficult. And uh, yeah, we're just going to enjoy the paddle. So far this morning, I think we've seen plenty of wildlife, a bit of a sort of woodpecker. Uh, we've seen what I think was, I don't think it was a pine martin, I think it was a mink, although it looked a bit like maybe it could be a ferret as well. I'm not very good on that side of things, so maybe somebody will be able to tell me. Um, yeah, before we start guys, please comment below and remember like, like the video and please hit subscribe. Woo, feels good to be out again, out on an adventure. Ah. Got some rapids just up ahead, some white water, nah, not really white water, just flowing water. Yeah, we'll just take on this. You might get some cracking footage of me falling in if you're lucky. I borrowed a friend's kayak. I'm not the worst kayak in the world, but I borrowed a friend's kayak. And it's a it's one of those kayaks that relies on you being very, very proficient. to the bone now but I'll dry uh, maybe I will put the spray deck on after all I'll just take the path of getting in and out but anyway we're in already back in the boat safe dry well not dry but safe just uh is a little bit choppy. I mean there's been lots of flooding recently. Well lots of rain so the water level's a bit higher but uh, I wasn't expecting to be quite this choppy at this stage. Maybe a little bit later on. in. It's uh, quite hairy.
it. It's all just calm down, eh? Well, we're flying along now, guys. It's about 10.30 in the morning. Not too far. Not too far off our lunch spot. Give us a good chance to do some picking. I did find a few bits in the woods back there. I'll show you when we get to the lunch spot. But for the, uh, for the time being, I'm just gonna make sure I don't fall in again. So we're getting very near to our lunch spot now. I don't know if you can see just there behind me. That's a, a lovely riverbank full of wild garlic that goes all the way back there and all the way down this river. I've just got to get past this tree stump now and then might try and get ourselves some lunch. Here we go then team. We've got some lovely garlic growing by the uh, side of the river here so I think this is going to be our lunch stop. Just pull the kayak up into this little bay here and we'll get our, get our pan out. Hey guys, so we're just by our lunch spot and we've found lots of wild garlic so we're just going to go and have a look at it now. I'm going to show you exactly what it is that we're looking for. So you have to forgive me, I've got the directional microphone on. But here it is, wild garlic. So, you're looking for, let me just pick one leaf. You're looking for a leaf that, it was, that is typically leaf shaped. There's no abnormalities on there. Uh, there's nothing uh, discernible about the stem necessarily. It's fairly circular. There's a little bit of an oval kink to it, but garlic grows at various different stages. So this is, uh, not always a very good uh, ID feature to look for. The key thing for wild garlic, realistically, is if you scrunch it up, it is unmistakably garlic. It might smell a bit like spring onions or onions or something like that, but it's part of the allium family and they're all edible. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, sorry, all wild alliums are edible. So that's what we're looking for. Um, in terms of how it grows, you'll see it sort of grows in this lovely large swathe of uh, garlic. We've um, we've actually got pretty much nothing else growing in here. I'll show you some of the less uh, desirable plants uh, if we take a walk over here. So I hope you can hear me but we have wild garlic sort of doing its thing down here at the moment. Just about poking through. We're not going to disturb that too much. Uh, but growing right next to it is this. Now this is called Lords and Ladies and if I just pick some, you'll see it's actually not too not too far off what garlic looks like. The big key features here is it's got these two uh, rabbit ears, if you like. They're two spiky out bits there. And also, it, it, it clearly isn't wild garlic if you study the leaf. It's, it's, it doesn't actually look like that. But it grows in the same sort of area, so it's very easy, if you were to pick lots of it, to accidentally pick one of these up. Now, you want to avoid... You want to avoid eating this at all costs. Just getting it on your lips will make your lips flare up, get all tingly and painful. Um, so it's best to make sure you know what you're looking for in terms of this. Later on in the season, this has got big shiny red berries, which are very obvious and they distinguish it. But at this time of year, when wild garlic is at its best, we need to avoid that at all cost. There you go, that's the uh, shape of the leaf to ID it. So we're just gonna put that one back. Uh, another plant that you often get growing in amongst the wild garlic is ivy. Now we don't really need to go into ivy too much, in too much detail, but you just oh, forgive, forgive the mess. There's a lot of kit that goes with doing this. If you just look 
back at our glorious patch over here, you can see that ivy is in there. Now ivy is poisonous, we don't want to be eating that. That's going to make it very unpleasant later on in the day if we uh, end up eating all that. Even just a little bit of it in there, so it's best to be careful. Always go through what you're, what you're uh, picking. And then just for a little bit of added intrigue, it's not very distinguished and I'm not going to touch this one. Uh, it's not easily mixed, sorry, it's not easily confused with wild garlic, but this is giant hogweed. Obviously it's in its young form at the moment. Uh, we're going to be sending out hogweed in one of our boxes later, later in the year, uh, which is uh, common hogweed is the edible form. This is giant hogweed, which is not edible, but you can see it's growing quite happily in the same sort of place. You don't want to get this on your skin. It has a nasty, nasty side effect where you get uh, quite severe blistering in the in sunburn. Consider it like severe sunburn. So we're just going to do some cooking now. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do something that's a little bit like a pad thai. I guess purists would say it's not a pad thai, but it's all ingredients you can buy in the supermarket. Um, and all stuff that a lot of people have in their cupboards at home. The idea of these videos is to show you just how easy it is cooking with uh, foraged ingredients, uh, adding them to your standard daily cooking. So we're doing a stir fry. Um, I'm going to put you on the uh, dangly cam hanging from the tree here. So do excuse me as it just gets into position. There we go. Okay, so uh, we're also going to chuck in a few extra little bits that I found. So this is this here is ground elder. Uh, people may have found this in our March box. Uh, it's a bit like uh, parsley, a bit like celery leaf. I'm not going to put too much of it in because it's quite a pungent smell. This right here is Himalayan balsam. It's a highly invasive uh, weed. Uh, it's something that councils and uh, organised groups get very twitchy about, quite rightly, because it takes over lots of, uh, especially riverbanks, it likes uh, likes it when it's wet underfoot. Um, but at this stage you can eat it and they're a bit like bean sprouts so obviously go very well in a stir fry. And then finally on the end here we've got scarlet elf cups. Now these are a type of mushroom they love growing on uh, dead or dying willow, often buried in the undergrowth. Uh, it's a bit late really in the season to find these but it's been so cold this year that actually uh, we've been lucky enough to find some today. So to start with we need to fire up our trusty stove. The pan is meant to be bent out of shape otherwise it doesn't fit in the kayak. Just making sure it's sitting comfortably. At the moment not quite. There we go. Okay so nice and simple to start with. Just going to put in some oil. This is just plain old rapeseed oil. It's the same stuff they use in fish and chip shops. You buy it in your supermarket. Don't need to put too much in. Maybe a tablespoonful. I will just let that make sure that's all nice and warm. You can see it's just starting to, just starting to crackle there. And I think what we'll do is we'll very quickly chuck in our ground elder. I don't really want that to be in large shape so we'll throw that in it should break down nice and easily I'm afraid there's not gonna be many there's not gonna be a great amount of technique with this other than me just throwing things in a pan but it's a good insight into how it all works that's bubbling nicely now into the mix goes a little bit of chili that's just a chili sauce again bought from the supermarket let that do its thing mix it in a little Oh, smelling great. Smelling great, guys. Into there, we're going to drop our Himalayan balsam. I want them to be cooked right down. That's looking great. Absolutely great. Just about to lose our pan, so I'm just going to adjust that on there. I mean, if I can cook this outside in these conditions, you guys can definitely cook it at home. Next up we'll throw in our elf cups, in they go. They'll go down easily. They, they are a mushroom that you can eat raw but generally speaking you should cook all wild mushrooms. Into there we're going to put some brown sugar. This brown sugar 
the standard supermarket stuff. Again, stuff you can find in the supermarket. Uh, about a tablespoonful, in it goes. We're gonna start making our sauce now. Into that, now this is a slightly more specialist ingredient, but again, very, very common in supermarkets. This is tamarind. Now this is the tamarind sauce. Uh, you can get tamarind in its uh, solid state. That would do just as well, but for me today, it was easier to put this in a tub and head out. Okay, that's gonna start doing some moving and shaking. And into there, gonna put some fish sauce. Now fish sauce is it's a very good seasoning in oriental cuisine. Um, pad Thai, is a, it, the, the lovely flavours in Pad Thai tend to be from the fish, fish sauce and the tamarind. So uh, that's going to, what was that, about two or three tablespoonfuls. That's going to simmer nicely. Oh, I can already smell that. Smells like a, smells like a lovely Chinese restaurant that right now. That sounds great. Now that's a really good colour. So we're going to put the noodles in quite quickly. Let them do their thing. Unfortunately, there's lots of single-use plastic in the ingredients industry. We try and keep ours it's fairly limited. These are udon noodles, but you can use whatever you have to hand. Standard egg noodles, rice noodles, or anything that you might find. And get that stirred so they're all lovely and coated. There, you can just start to hear it cooking away now. Okay, and into that pan, from my little washed pile, is going to go all this lovely garlic. Now the garlic is freshly picked, I'm going to put the whole stem in because I quite like it with all the different textures. You can rip this up, I guess you can rip it up like this, but to be honest, once it wilts down, it's basically indistinguishable from its original form anyway. But we'll rip it up like this, maybe for the purposes of a pretty video. In it goes. And to finish off, this is just standard light soy sauce. Just a good old squirt of that. We're not very exact with our recipes here. You never know what you're gonna find in the wild, so you can't be too prescriptive about what it is that you're cooking. But generally speaking, there are some rules to follow. If you add soy sauce, we obviously don't need that much in the way of seasoning. This is going to be a relatively salty dish anyway. Lovely salty and sweet. Just let that garlic all wilt down. The trick with wild garlic is to not cook it for too long. You don't want to lose uh, lovely delicate flavours that it has. It's not like standard bulb garlic, which requires a bit of, well, to get rid of all the, the sharpness, the strength of it, you need to cook it for a little bit so it goes sweet. But here we're looking at maybe a minute or two, if that. If you had a really hot pan, which obviously we don't because we're on a little gas stove outside, you'd be able to probably turn the ring off and uh, chuck it in and it would just do its thing. You can just see that starting to wilt away now. Just need to make sure my pan doesn't fall over. Okay, you can just see those noodles are just starting to soften up now. Not too far off our desired consistency. It smells fantastic. I wish you guys could smell it. It smells really, really rich and that chilli is just starting to get to the back of my throat in a really good way. Okay, so I think we're pretty much there now. So I'm just going to turn the gas off. That'll do its thing. And into my Amazing plastic bowl. Sorry, I've nudged the wobble cam. In it goes. I'll just pop that pan down to cool. And how about that? Well, there you go, guys. That's my uh, forage lunch. It's a stir fry made with wild garlic. I'll just bring that in close. I'm going to enjoy this now. But if you're interested in getting hold of some wild garlic yourself, you can get it in April's subscription of uh, Forage Box. Just head over to, over to our website. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can get hold of that. And I think I'll include a 50% discount code for those who have uh, made it all the way to the end of the video. Uh, that'll give you 50% off your first box so you can see what all the hype is about. Uh, you get five foraged ingredients, some fresh, some preserved. Uh, I think with April this month, we're planning on putting our first boozy item in, which should be exciting. Yeah. 
we've had nothing but positive feedback. Um, yeah, try and eat as wild as possible whenever you can. Okay, take care guys, see you next time.